cracking, everybody. My name is Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here. Hey, Lindsay from Dallas, Texas. And once again, another episode of the Seven Figure Squad podcast based out here at Dallas, Texas. And in studio with me, once again, is Milton Alvarez, my co-host, personal trainer. And also, welcome back, Jared John Mason. <laughs> what's up, what's Looking up? fly, baby. <clears throat> we had to have you back twice based on the success of our last podcast. Milton, that was like our best podcast, most yeah, uh, concurrent viewers at, at one point. Triple digit, baby. Triple digits. Yeah, triple digits. Wow, you know, I've cracked triple digits. <coughs> we thought we were cracking 50, <laughs> we cracked 100. Yeah. So thank you for watching the Seven Figure Squad podcast because it's all due to John Mason being oh, here. Stop. On the <laughs> stop. <laughs> stop. Stop. Not doing me. But uh, there's a podcast here dedicated to help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire based on faith, finance, fatherhood, and relationships. And uh, I think our last podcast, well, let's, let's pick up from there. There's some things we had some unfinished business from our last podcast mm -hmm. in terms of relationships. So uh, in this podcast today, we're going to be talking about should women tolerate cheating? Hmm. And uh, how men commit to long-term relationships and what a kid exchange looks like here with co-parenting and parents that are divorced. From a personal finance topics, we got to why athletes do not create generational wealth. Uh, this gentleman here, he says, man, you can't convince me to be a realtor. Uh, what the average millionaire reality, the reality of becoming a millionaire in America today, and what type of player, if you're building a team, you're recruiting, building a company, recruiting for a, a, a church, recruiting for your company, what type of players do you want? This coach explains three type of players that you want to look for in building your organization. What Dana White said here about his Anheuser-Busch deal, and uh, we'll be covering also Charlie Munger, Sadly, passing away an end of an era in investing in corporate America on Wall Street here when Charlie Munger passes when Charlie when Charlie Munger passed away, um, which is Warren Buffett's confidant here of Berkshire Hathaway. So uh, why don't we jump into the first topic? By the way, before we do this, we had a very good Christmas song we wanted to queue up. Uh, Jordan, we want to queue up that Christmas song of the, the reggae pastor. There's a cut that needs to be on iTunes, it needs to be on Spotify. You ever think that reggae sound like good, man? I don't feel safe watching that song. Rapid <laughs> 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 fire. More Just fire. Praying the fire. Praise God. So, uh, speaking of God, we need God in relationships. How many guys know we need God in our relationships, man? 100%. So, uh, uh, first one I, I want to talk about is Jordan Pearson. You brought up this topic um, last episode. We didn't get a chance to cover it. But how men commit to long-term relationships. You want to introduce this topic? Yeah, so... There are many questions that people have to ask right before you jump into a relationship. Um, John and I, you, are, you, you and I are pretty much on a... This is the married right. section of the podcast. This is the single section of the podcast, everybody. Just want to let you guys know. So regardless of whether <laughs> you're an employee, you're an entrepreneur, whatever you may be Married, corner, ding, ding. Married and kids. Must be nice, right? <laughs> so regardless of what you decide to go with, with what kind of career you decide to go with, what kind of monetary outcome you're trying to have, the one thing that's going to massively impact that outcome is always going to be the partner that you end up with. Of course. And I came across this video, and I think it spoke lots of volume and to John and I, actually. And Jordan, if you can pull up that video, man, that'd be great. Yes, yes. Yeah. Men check women out. So maybe one of the things a man wants to do if he's going to commit to a long-term relationship is he wants to find out, well, does this woman have what it takes to actually commit to a long-term relationship? And what that means in part is that he has to know that she's capable of controlling her impulsive desires, Ooh. right? Because otherwise she's gonna stray. You can tell a woman has control over her impulses if she can say no. And maybe he checks that even harder because he does everything he can to seduce her and she still says no. You know, and it works and he knows she's interested and she still says no. Well, then he can conclude that she's capable of keeping her pants on let's say, and that's actually something that you need to conclude if you're gonna to commit to a long-term partnership, obviously, on the male front, because you wanna be assured of paternity. And here's the thing, in, in the dating culture that we have nowadays, that's why it's so hard to date, especially you know, in your early 20s, 30s, and even actually at any age. And I feel like the, the younger you try to go with the dating range, the harder it is because of the way they think. And now- What do you mean the dating range? You can be in your 30s, 40s, mm -hmm. and meet someone who is in their 20s. 
27 and, and younger. That, that was me. I was 38 years old when I met Sheena. She was 26. Right. But now the culture that we have right now, for example, the way I was brought up, the way I was raised, is the mo uh, or taught at least, right? And the moment you start seeing someone or you find interest in somebody, what you do is completely drop everything else. And that's just, it's not that you're trying to be exclusive, exclusive mm. with them. It's just that you're trying to respect their time, your time, and each other's energy. Yep. And if you are a faith-based person, you believe on some level that having intercourse with somebody is an exchange of energy. It's a spiritual bondage that mm -hmm. you create with somebody. Oh, for, oh, so if sure. I'm, if I meet, you know, if I meet Suzanne Smith at a coffee shop and her and I just, you know, we, we kick it off and we start talking, we start you know, engage in a conversation in one day, two days, three days, but it's not exclusive yet. There's a lot of people nowadays who still keep their options open and date around, mess around sexually and any other, and every single other way. And then there's an old school way of thinking, which people believe it's the old school way of thinking where I like Suzanne Smith. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give her my time, my energy, and I'm going to pray about this. Mm -hmm. The old school way. Yeah. By the way, I just, I just need to notice you have a killer lineup, bro. This whole thing going on right here. I'm sorry. I just, I just noticed this. Milton's barber is sick. Like killer lineup, but uh, <laughs> but to your point. So so in other words, if you're dating a woman, yeah. do you want confident knowing that she's not talking to other men? Is what, what you're saying? I'm dating. Okay, so two in two ways I approach this. Either one or two. I go the way that at least a lot of us are taught in church. It's mm -hmm. you're dating, mm -hmm. but restrain from sex. And unfortunately. I, that's why grace exists because hey, man, we, I've fallen on that sword you, many times. As a man, you tend to fall in, in, in that realm because mm -hmm. the way I perceived it or would perceive it is I'm dating her. She's the only woman. The intention of me dating you mm -hmm. is to have some form of commitment and long term outcome. So if you're the only woman in my life, you're the only woman I'm being intimate with. But now if you have a different mindset of being being in a relationship and you engage in sexual activity with one mm -hmm. person, but you're still dating around. The, the thought that, comes in, that goes in the back of my head is, if you and I just laid together on a Monday, and then you're out, or I come to find out you're dating multiple people, and you go out on multiple dates on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yeah. and I say this in a very respectable manner, yeah. a lot of people nowadays don't use protection. I don't want to find out that on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you raw dogged three other guys, knowing that I was just in, in, oh, yeah. you know, in bed with you. Yeah. Because now it's no longer, sure, it's morality, but it's also the diseases. What, or, what can or, I catch? Or you're dating a girl, and she still has guy friends. Guy friends. I don't believe that shit. So, as far as what? Having guy friends. What's so, so? You can if you're a woman, you cannot have a guy friend. If you're a guy, you cannot have a woman friend. What if this woman has a guy friend and their friend since literally six, seven, six, seven years old? They know their families. Never had any form of intention behind it. You believe in absolutely no Z kind, zero kind of guy friends. There's some. There, we're 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 human beings by nature. There is some form of thought in the back of his head throughout the whole entire relationship. What would we like to sleep with her, and vice versa. So, for the men who give you pushback on, on that and would say that's a very beta kind of mindset, that's a very controlling kind of mindset. It's not a beta and, mindset. And, and you sound like a that's, very a, that's a reality mindset. A, a you sound like a very controlling human being with that because that's happened yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. I believe in not having male friends. Me, might not having female that's friends. Being, that's being that's being real. Yeah. Every man, I know, it's being around Marines. Yeah. Every man thinks. So so why does a why does a any man willing to sleep with any woman? She could be three hundred pounds. She could be out of shape. She could be we call it beer goggles because at the end of the night there's there's fifty guys in the bar and three women, and every guy is trying to sleep with her. Is that a beta thing? No, that's a human drive thing. It's a that, male drive thing. That three hundred pound woman kind of was very specific. Have you ever have you ever been with a girl? Zero. I mean, exactly. I, 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 more I, I, drinks. I, 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 pulled, I, pulled, I pulled guard. I'm walking around the barracks. I'm looking through the windows. Oh, here we go. Wow. It's okay. Yeah. You know. So, listen. A man will sleep with anybody. Yeah. You know, women different story. But a man, a man, a man will try to stick his freaking shit in a freaking knot in a tree. As long as it has a hole. As long as it has a hole. Tight enough hole. Exactly. So. <laughs> But what, I mean, one, one thing, not, a man would try to think and crack between a box spring and a mattress. On a, on a grander scale. On a grand, let's talk business, let's talk money now. On a grander scale. Great transition. Con connection. No, 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 hear me out, hear me out. Hold on, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, John. Hear me out. Because I, I have questions for both of you guys in this realm. Hear me out. The, what actually turned me off to the idea of just saying, you know what? I'm young. I'm, I'm in a good place. I'm going to sleep around and do what I want is a couple things. Well, two things. One is the amount of bridges that you burn when you do that. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, 
a lot of men see women as objects and as opportunities just to have, you know, some form of fun. But when you start seeing women, which that's, that's the way you should, but a lot of men don't, as people and as valuable as men are, because a lot of women also provide a lot of value in, in their own ways, because again, they also work, they have businesses, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. How do I know if I go meet Susie Smith at a cafe, I like her, but I know there's not gonna be a future there, so I just wanna use her for sex for a one night stand. And then Susie Smith's network can complement my business, my life, my spiritual walk. But now that I laid with Susie Smith, and I want absolutely no commitment from her, but she wants a commitment. Now that's burning the bridge for me. Why? Because the moment that Susie Smith decides to get into a relationship with somebody, she's going to have to immediately cut me off because I, out of respect, to, cocktails. Yeah. she's going to completely have to cut me off. Which is the same thing for me. The moment I am in a committed relationship, I'm married, engaged, X, Y, Z. Any woman that I've ever had a past with, completely, whether it's flirting, dating, mm -hmm. kissing, sex, they will be completely cut off out of my life. There's no room for those kind of women in my life. Right, so I, I think it's a, it's a, yeah, it, it, it burns bridges. It just burns friends. bridges. Just right. friends, right? Just friends. So now you guys in the position that you guys are in, I'm, I'm very I'm very interested. And there's been a mass transition, uh, 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 yeah, just transformation that I've seen in your life and Matt's life. When you guys go, you know, any advice for the young guys or even older gentlemen who are going into business for themselves and just trying to have a better outcome. So is it dating or is it business relationships? Are we, are we switching? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's okay. dating. It's dating. Okay. Knowing okay. that dating, knowing that the, the woman that you're dating, they mm -hmm. will have a massive impact in anything yep. you do in life. What is that? Like maybe like two top qualities that you guys look for in a woman. Well, I mean, going back to the original question, it, you know, first off, if you're talking to somebody once a week, yeah. they could be talking to other people. That's okay because yeah. that's just you're just getting to know each other. Yeah. Twice a week, three times a week. At what point is it, hey, it's just you and I? Yeah. There's got to be also some common sense. Yeah. Um, you know, if you go watch some of these, these gurus, go read a book, uh, How to Be 3% Man by Corey, uh, Corey Wayne, great book. You know, it should always be the woman's idea to bring it up because you don't want her to feel pressured to be in a committed relationship. She's going to ask, you know, what's going on? Well, maybe the guy brings it up, hey, what's going on? Because if she's not ready to commit, she's got to be emotionally ready to commit. That's why Jordan Peterson is talking about that. Yeah. But there's guys that are serious saying, listen, I'm not – here to mess with your head? Am I here to mess? Like, yeah. I'm I'm a serious person. I'm looking for this in my life. I'm clear about what I want. Where are you at? Mm -hmm. So it's not wrong if a guy brings it up, but usually the woman is like, hey, mm -hmm. what's going on? Because it's normal in a society for guys to, to be dating two or three different women. And at the end, it's like the girl says, well, you, you know, I want to be exclusive. Things have changed over time, but you also have to use some common sense. So, hey, you and I have been talking for a couple of weeks. It is just you and I. You have to... And he talks about you have to control your impulses. So if people can't control their impulse, that's the issue, and that comes out. <clears throat> so, so what do you look for? Going in, going into yeah. into that, and we, we talked about this. So actually, make the list. Yeah. You should sit down, make a list of things that you want. Most men are going to first start off with what looks. Yeah. Because we're sexually attracted first and foremost. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, good body, good good hair, good teeth. They're fit. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. But th that shit goes away. Yeah. So put that aside. If, if the person, if you don't look at the person, if you just, you just hear their voice, if you just lay with them in bed, how's their energy? How's, how, do they, how do you feel with them? Can you be yourself? Can you let your guard down? Um, you look at all the spirituality side of it. The sexual stuff is easy. That's just conversations. The, the disagreements, that's conversations. Now, uh, really what I'm looking for is someone that, that's open to have a tough conversation because that's something that I'm not even the best at. Where if, I, if I can improve somewhere, I need to get better at those conversations. Yeah. Um, but it's also something, hey, what's wrong? Not stonewall. I look for someone that's open to communicate, someone that wants to improve. The ambition part, I'm not worried about the finances. Uh, I got that covered. I'm looking for someone that wants to build an empire together, but they still have, she still has her own identity. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking for someone that wants to compliment, yeah. but also not uh, what sort of looking for. Uh, prevent me from doing what I have to do. Matt, how many times are we on the call at 12, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning? Of course. Yeah. Right? Well, that's our business. Of We're course. running a business. Like, yeah. I don't want someone saying, you have to have boundaries. It's too late. Mm -hmm. Bullshit. I'm yeah. making millions of dollars a year. See that house? Yeah. That, that, see that car? Okay, babe. I'm running a business. You have to respect that. That trip we're going to Monaco next, next month? How do you think we're paying for this? <laughs> so it's not me being a narcissist or controlling. You have to respect the fact that this is the business. If we ran a restaurant, we're working on Thanksgiving. Well, we, 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 should, we have to. If you're a professional athlete... You're playing football or basketball on a holiday. Like you have to respect the fact that this is what's required for us to have this lifestyle. And then yes, you can have conversations. Hey, listen, if you're going to be with me, 
understand mm-hmm. this is what is required for this lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So if you want to take a private jet to Vegas, that's a $60,000 round trip. In order for us to have that lifestyle, here's my work schedule. You know, we talked about er- earlier. Well, last night I'm at London House till 2 in the morning. Okay, then, then I get on a flight. I'm here at 6 o'clock. Um, I'm here working all day with you. We got other stuff, meetings tonight. Da, 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 da. Then I fly back and I'll be at the office tomorrow in Orlando for closeout. We're going to work till 2 3 in the morning again. Like, okay, well, that's the lifestyle. But we're also going to have an amazing life in between. So I'm looking for someone that's supporting, uh, understanding, and not not allowing me to drift. Not allowing me to drift. A lot of women, a lot of women will give pushback. Like, all right, you're asking for all these things, which is fantastic. But in order for you to be able to attract the kind of person into your life, you need to become that person first. 100. percent A lot of women will uh, attack that aspect, mm-hmm. and that's something that you guys have done to this point where. The moment you guys have given, been giving yourself the attention mentally, spiritually, and physically, the outcomes of both of your lives, and you have, we have two books here from Matt that literally show his outcomes on the moment he started taking care of his spiritual life, his emotional life, and his physical life, more doors of opportunity started opening up for him mm-hmm. because he was more clear on where he stood. And for John, for you, hey, Jordan, we can pull up the picture of John. This is a vulnerable moment for you. There's two phases of John's life here. <laughs> two phases. And, and, and I, I don't want to speak on, on, on your behalf, but I want to know what the difference was face, bro. The, uh, uh, between the person A, person B, mentally, emotionally, and physically, and sp- even spiritually. What were the differences? Uh, I think that I think the camera adds about 20 pounds. So, oh. You know, <laughs> it's an angle. It's an angle. It's an angle. I don't know what's going on. Dude, was that Aruba? That was, a, that was Aruba. Yeah. I think it was Aruba. Yeah, we had a good time there. Um, what's funny is Milton, I, I was... I had a bad part in my life. It was very strange. You know, I think everyone goes through a little bit of depression, a little bit of uh, low self-esteem, lack of belief, even though they're just, they're just going through the motions. They, there was a point in my life where I couldn't cry. Mm-hmm. It was just, like Shaq just did a video that says, I don't have time for emotions. I got too many people relying on me, a responsibility. That's cool too, but you also have to have a, a little bit of relief. That's not even healthy. I just couldn't cry. I was like this, all right, cool. And when you're emotionless, there, there's no connection with anybody. Mm. And part of human need is to have some kind of connection, some kind of love. And I had to have a breakthrough. And I saw that picture. I said, what? I said, that's not me. And I know a lot of other people maybe look at themselves in the mirror and they're like, that's not me. Ten years ago, okay, what the hell happened? And, you know, you don't get out of shape overnight. It has to do with a lot of late nights, a lot of alcohol. And that, during that time, I was eating late, 11, 12 o'clock in the morning. I was snacking at 1, 2 in the morning. And... A little snack here, a little snack there, like my catarillas, my tequila catarillas, you know. Mm-hmm. But alcohol's got sugar. And it wasn't even having a lot. It was just consistently. And I said, that's not me. Um, my, my identity is not matching what I look like, so I called you up. And you can't fake your health. You have to go through the consistency. You have to go through, number one, acceptance. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's where I'm at. This sucks. I'm not denying it. It's my fault. So first thing is taking responsibility. If I'm out of shape, that ain't your fault. The burger didn't find a way. To I, I picked up the burger. Mm. My fault. So one is it allowing it to say, it's all good. I screwed up. Let's move past it. But now I need a game plan. So and then I have to reach out for support because I don't know how to do this. Reach out to you. So I have to have a level of acceptance, vulnerability, but also coachability. Mm. Hey, I screwed up. You're the expert. What do I got to do? Whatever you tell me, I'm going to go do. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. And then my discipline got, um, got better. You, John, I need you uh, uh, fasting, cardio in the morning, da 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 da. What's the time frame? And he gave me the time frame. So that happened over a couple months. And our diet was strict to the point, cardio in the morning, like it was nonstop. So I'm very proud, I'm very proud of that. Like I can fully say I'm very proud of what happened with the results there because I know that I put the effort in mm. and I was consistent. So in entrepreneurship and business, when you look at someone that's healthy, like even your transformation, when, you, when I first met you, you look at someone and says, man, they're consistent with their health. They, they believe in what they're saying. They're disciplined. They want to take care of themselves. That's someone I can rely on because they're consistent in what they're doing. Yeah. And uh, I, just, I just think when I got disciplined in my health, my business got better because I was more disciplined with my follow-up, more disciplined with my schedules, more disciplined with my diet. I do one thing, I do everything. But I yeah. posted everything, right? Yeah. So I was, I, that was actually one of my, my income grew. Is when things started popping when I got my, my health back on point. Matt, you you reached that utopian destination that a lot of men wish they could have. Money. You have God, number one. You mm-hmm. have money. 
You have a wife that loves you, cares for mm. you, gives you the, oh, the amount yeah. of grace that you need as a man. We all need that grace. Mm. And a lot of women aren't <laughs> willing to give us that grace. One red flag, quote unquote red flag, and they're out. Yeah. You have beautiful children who yeah, right now they, they they don't demonize you anymore. Now you have idolized and you have humanized. Yeah. In a couple yeah. of years, you might have a little bit of demon. Oh, with, with, the next wave. With, with, <laughs> exactly. But you're in that position right that a lot of men might pray for. Literally, a lot of people would go above and beyond just to get to that point. For yourself, you know, a couple things that you can advise these, these younger men that are somewhat lost, whether they're in business or just employees or wherever they may be, yeah. when it comes down to taking the right partner. Well, I, I spent my entire 30s to repay back the emotional mistakes of my 20s. So one thing I had always squared away going, I always knew how to make money. Even though I was screwing things up, even though I was believing God, at the end of the day, I was still busting my tail to provide for my kids. I was a single dad of three kids, and I, was, I had custody of them. But to see me now at 50 years old, to see me at this chapter in my life, a lot of people discount my chapter one, chapter two, chapter mm -hmm. three. It was horrible. But, uh, you know, back to the, you know, the fitness area, for me it was a faith. Once you, for me, my faith. And so once I realized I need to love me, I need to pray for me, 14 years where I was single. And that's why I can say guys should not be friends with girls. Because, you know, every time I try to be in the friend zone with a girl, guess what? Deep, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Ominous, like in a, in a, maybe in a creepy way. Mm -hmm. I was trying to see how I can slip past the friend zone into the, you know, you know what zone? Friends with benefit zone. Friends with benefit zone. So, you know, it's, uh, it, I've been through that. And I'm warning my daughters about that too as well. Look out for that guy, that's the, the, that friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I, I know. I, I can tell it. Why? Because I walked that. I was that nasty guy, and so and, and but to a lot of extent, I still am. That, that by the blood and by the grace, I'm I'm here, and I can recognize it. And I can heal from it and, and recover from it. But uh, the best thing about Sheena is uh, not only she you know, like to, till this day, I'm looking at her freaking hot wife, all, all these different things about her, things I want to say internally, I can't say externally, <laughs> but uh, she's very patient with me. She's confident, she's self-assured, you know, and, uh, and when she locks onto something, one thing I never have to worry about her is, is uh, having some other dude text her. And, and she, if anybody knows how to draw boundaries, it's her. She draws some clear boundaries, she tells me, to, we're just uh, laughing, we were taking pictures uh, at one point at one event, and. She said, babe, I think you crossed the boundary. I said, like, babe, I'm just standing there taking pictures, smoking my cigar. These 10 women want to take a picture of me. What do you want me to choose? I want you to walk away. Does mm. that make you feel confident? Walk away. You, you know I'm good with you. She goes, babe, I just don't like the way it looks. Mm -hmm. And now that the wisdom behind that, it's like she's not trying to control me. All this shit going down right now, all these people getting sued, they can take different pictures. They can oh, yeah. edit different pictures. And so now I'm even more. Uh, you're a target. I'm a target now. Right, I got deep pockets, and people want to come after me, to lay some claim, and whatever the case may be. Yeah, I need to protect. There's more about me that I have to worry about my business, my brand, my family. There's one thing you just talked about, and Jordan Peterson said this. He says a harmless man is not a good man. A good man is a very violent man who voluntarily has that under control. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have it under control. Yeah, and that never leaves us. Like you talked about a story you just told me about. Like that's a badass story because mm -hmm. women feel safe when yeah. you do that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's just under control. Yeah. yeah. And you talk about in our business, you know, we're in sales. Anything in sales is very sexy because sales is closing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that, it's that leadership mentality. Yeah. That's why a lot of women are attracted to, you know, leadership, but they also find themselves with narcissists because a lot of narcissists have leadership qualities and you, have mm -hmm. to, you know they find out a little bit too late of you know who they're dating or married. I want to look up that definition. Narcissist is characterized as a person whose mental health condition has an unreasonably high sense of their own importance. Yeah, self-absorption. Self-absorption. Yeah. yeah. And Robert Greene has, has three definitions of a healthy narcissist, a functional narcissist, and a deep narcissist. The deep narcissist is the one that's going to make the woman feel insecure about herself yeah, and sure. insulting him, yeah. and and you know why are you wearing that you look like this and they're very controlling mm. uh, a functional narcissist is someone that is still doing good mm. uh they're building a business but they're really still a little bit more about themselves a little bit more on the arrogant side a healthy narcissist is saying listen you know i just had five clients lose lose uh, uh 20 pounds this week i gotta get into 30 pounds this week so you're almost absorbed with getting other people results so there's, there's a, mm. a form of that's a little bit healthy, but most people, when you think of the word narcissist, it's just negative. Mm. But going back to, to the leadership side, um, in, 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 our, in, in our world, we're getting a lot of attention, a lot of pictures, a lot of people want to take pictures with us. And it's purely innocent from mm. their standpoint. They yeah. want to post it on social media, look yeah. who I'm hanging with, yeah. I'm friends with so-and-so. Yeah. And we're like, all right, cool. But as a, as a partner, seeing that 
She's not going to like that. Yeah. One thing that I started doing, you know, people put their arms around. The, mm -hmm. I stopped doing that. So what yeah. I start doing, my hands are now with you. Who, who's who's doing that? What soccer player did that? Was there a soccer player did that? Or was it was an actor. Uh, it was no. It was uh, the the guy of Spain. John Wick. Some, What's his name? John Wick. Was it I'm not name? sure, but it was somebody in Spain. There was a like referee of Spain kissed the girl. Are you talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got yeah. whatever that was. But Keanu Reeves never puts her hand. Oh, Keanu doesn't do yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't he, know. He puts, okay. his, he puts his hand in like this. So what I started doing, you watch pictures of me, my hands are in my pockets. Got it. I don't want to, my, where are your hands? They're here. Yeah. Or if I'm holding a microphone, like in the front, like I don't want to do this. I don't want hands behind the back. Mm. I don't do, there's no touching whatsoever. This is okay, yeah, right? Yeah. right? <laughs> there's none of this going on. Consent. It, it's just a matter of, I don't even want to play that game. Yeah. yeah. It's, not even, it's not even worth it. Makes sense. But, you know, this area of picking the right partner is such a critical, important part of building your life. Because, again, I lost a decade of my life by picking wrong. And if you pick wrong, the mm. next clip I hear I want, to, I want to show you is if you pick wrong and you, there's no, no such thing as a healthy divorce. It's always a nasty divorce. I, never said, I had a great divorce. And every, every, nobody's ever said I had a great It's always that nasty divorce. You split up money. And then you have, from a guy's standpoint, you have a judge trying to tell you, your wife trying to tell you how much time you spend with your children. Mm -hmm. like, like, I'm, I'm the dad. I'm the provider. I, I'll tell you when I'm spending time with the kids. Not some judge trying to tell me, here, this weekend, drop off here, blah, blah, blah. I hated that area. But this is what happens when you choose wrong, and then, well, let's take a look at this clip. I don't want to spoil it. Can you raise the volume? Give me my baby. I'm making a big deal in front of her. When you give me my baby, you can go. I am phone. Arguing. Whose car they're gonna get in? Control. You can touch the truck. Control the situation. She's trying to control the situation. Oh. I can't tell you how. She's much gaslighting him with her actions. Oh. Okay. Uh, to make a quote unquote snap. Give me my baby. And, I drove up here. and he is patient as shit right now. You don't want to give me my child. There's no car seat. Yes, it is a car seat in there. Trying to demean a man. It's a fast way to try to demean a man. Give me my baby so I can go. You don't need to be on And then you put a child in the middle of it. It's a car seat in there. Okay. Immature her. She's right in the middle of it. She's not looking out for the child. No. Or for her own self. Her own self. Trying to hurt the guy. Trying to hurt the guy through her child. Yeah. Right. Why is she not giving the kid? I don't know what, this, I don't know what the context was. This, this is just wrong. And then she's trying to quote unquote console the child. Yeah. Make him look like the bad guy. And by the way, the good for him to put this on camera so now he can go to court and play this for the judge yeah okay we can stop you can stop right here my freaking blood is boiling right now because i've been through that i've been through that direct moment right there myself i hate that shit but that's the result of picking the wrong chick of picking the wrong one and you and you are thinking like sometimes uh, john we were talking earlier in the boardroom like how can we or you know we, we can you know I, I was just intimate with this girl and then, you know she's talking to somebody on thursday friday saturday right mm -hmm. take it to another level how can we intimate this person? I'm gonna love you. That we do all these different things, and then you crush me. You crush my spirit, taking my child, my DNA, right? You try to manipulate me throughout this stuff. That's that's. I'd rather you sleep without the dudes, mm -hmm. but don't mess with me and my child. Here's the other part of it: narcissism also lasts in females too. Oh, for sure. It's not just men. Oh no. So yeah. our society. It's not, it's not gender specific. You know, and here's the thing: I've seen a lot of great women end up with narcissistic men, and those motherfuckers need to be thrown out of a roof. Often mm -hmm. I move through a damn window. Mm -hmm. I talked about this. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have some, you know, some friends from the past that I've, I've spoken to. They were in bad marriages, and they tell me what's going on. I'm like, if I come across these guys, like they're done. Like, yeah. sorry, there's no reason for a man to act that way towards a woman. Yeah. But there's also no reason for a woman to act that way towards a man, especially yeah. if there's a child involved. Because yeah. now the kids are growing up. Because mm -hmm. if you think about all of your traumas, all your shit that you're dealing with. It always goes back to when you were a kid, yeah. how you were raised. Yeah. So what that girl is learning <laughs> exactly. is how her mom is treating her dad. Yeah. And that's, no, 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 no. All that has to happen is, you know, we're not vibing right now, yeah. but she right now yeah. is seeing this. So here you go. We'll talk later. There was a good post. I forgot when. It was an ex couple and the and it was during Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Remember this post? Mm -hmm. Valentine's Day when the father got the mother, ex-wife, flowers and roses and the kids saw this mm. and they said this is how you treat a woman mm -hmm. with respect yep. even though we're not yep. together you yep. treat them with respect yep. no matter what yep. so the kids see that growing up and i i think it, it is hard when emotions are high logic's low i i do think that if someone could just say hey listen you know let's bring this back down have the conversation but in our culture it's always the it's the guy's fault 
Yeah. It's the guy's fault. Or the judge. You go into court. Yeah. So it's, it's the dead be dead. It can't, it's too biased. It's yeah. too one way a lot of the times. Yeah. Not saying that a lot of the guys screw up. I grant, listen, I'm, I'm going, I'm playing in the middle here because I've seen both sides of it. Mm -hmm. But it, it shouldn't just always be the wife gets it or the, or the woman gets it. It should always be the guy gets it. Well, really, what's the situation? Mm -hmm. If the woman's screwing up, give it to the guy. Yep. If the guy's screwing up, go to the woman. Like, yep. let's use some common sense. Yep. And I think we've lost that. I think we've, we've gone to. Well, let's go to the other side. Let's yeah. take a look, look at this other clip. Should women tolerate a cheating man? No. All right, let's, let's take a look at this clip, what this woman says. Let's say we were together. Would you tolerate cheating yeah. from me? Of course. What? I would. <laughs> now, why is that? Um, because men biologically cheat. Because you can go sleep with Bullshit. 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 Biologically <laughs> cheat. Right now, oh, Who told her biologically cheat? She's in, Miami. She's in Miami. Super Gotta be. drunk and just have a one night stand, but you're still coming home to me, sleeping with me, providing for me, and doing everything you're supposed to. It's Low just biologically made. Oh, the men horrible. are gonna go ahead and cheat oh, because it's just my pleasure. You know what I mean? It's shit. status, basically, when men cheat. But when women cheat, it's disrespect because oh, when we it's cheat, it's a connection. Like we cheat with intention, we cheat with emotions. You guys don't cheat with emotions. We do. So I don't think a man should stay with a woman that cheats on her. No, why wouldn't you feel insecure by finding out that I, you know, was blowing on all the chicks back out? Oh, as women, <laughs> you're meant to be feminine and protective of the home and stay with your partner and take care of the kids. So if you're providing for me and doing everything you're supposed to, I will definitely tolerate cheating. But if it's a 50-50 relationship, it's like I'm your roommate. Why Why are you, like, down making roommate. a downfall? Like, that's not, roommate. That's not cool. Roommate. She's definitely a Mexican. Sorry, respect me. She's definitely a Mexican. That, that, that's very cultural, bro. They're, they're, I, I heard this saying one time that men protect their hearts the way women protect their bodies, a.k.a. You know, avoiding sleeping around with many men. Because men just see sex as an act, something for pleasure, temporary, where a man can go out to the streets for a day or two, go have sex with as many women as he wants, but if his heart is not there, he won't stay there. He'll go back to where his heart is at. And that reminds me of that specific quote that it's not, it's not even a quote, it's a statement that, that, that someone uh, wrote one day. But that's definitely a very, I'm sorry, maybe if I'm wrong culturally, but that's a very Mexican thing to say. For Is me. it right? It, that, that, that's, it, I don't think it's right. Okay. But my grandparents did it. My great grandparents did it. I can say my, my father did it. Mm -hmm. That's a very, very Hispanic thing to say, man. I'm not sure how, how it is in your culture and your culture, but that's, no. that's absolutely wrong for me. By the way, for those of you watching this live or watching the replay, is it okay for a man to cheat? And if your man cheats on you, do you tolerate it? There's, there's, there's the U's and the C's they talk about in, in relationships. There's three U's that turn women off. They're, they're either unseen, they're not understood, or they feel unsafe. If they have those, they're going to go elsewhere. That's when they start cheating. She talked about in the video, it's an emotional connection. Now, if a woman's having sex and there's no emotion, she's got some other emotional issues going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I've heard those stories before. Okay, then for the men, if the men are going to cheat, there's the C's. They're either being criticized, which means there's no peace in the home. Okay, they're either being controlled, not allowed to be themselves, yeah. or the woman's just completely closed off. There's no fun, no playfulness. Yeah. And that's when they start seeking other attention. So there's a book called His Needs, Her Needs. Okay, his needs, her needs. Um, certain guys have needs, certain women have needs. If you're not gonna fulfill your partner's needs, then it's not even a relationship. Mm -hmm. So if you're not gonna give yourself to somebody, don't be in the relationship, don't even put yourself in a cheating situation. Yeah. Um, you know, what she's talking about to me is just low standard, low self-esteem, low self-respect for yourself. Like, like they're going through the motions. That's not a fulfilled life, that's an empty life. Mm -hmm. And no, I don't think it's acceptable on, on either side. Yeah. The other book is... Because uh, if you allow her to do it, yeah, or, or when she allows you to do it, she, you makes, can allow her to do it. Makes no sense yeah. to me. I mean, I get the culture, bro, but it's all good, you know. Uh, no, that's... No, not cool with it. No. W what about what about <laughs> people who believe in open-ended relationship, open relationships now? That's not a relationship. That, yeah. you, that's just... Uh, you, that's not even a relationship. Not, just be open. You're not in a relationship. Relationship is your relation between one and one, one person and another person. You're intimate with one, one person. If I'm in a relationship, again, this is why faith needs to be injected into America. Because I'm in faith with the God I love, not gods, of the God I love. And if, you know, it's just odd for me that if I have this vertical relationship, I love God, I love my Savior, right? If I love God and I don't want to cheat on that relationship, it's just natural for me to look at everything here on earth to look at the same horizontal perspective. 
But if I'm cheating on God, and it's easy for me to cheat, or I have no God, have no faith, then I'm looking for faith and acceptance and assurance in man or woman, then, then no wonder I'm cheating around. But uh, I, look, I look at my wife, uh, I, listen, very clearly, my wife has been the last woman I've ever slept with since 2012. 10, 11 years now. We've had, we're still experimenting with some crazy shit. Yeah. I, mean, we have, I hear about it all the time. We, we, we hear some, I, I'm more in love with it. It's, it's, it's not even love. It's like when we have sex, it's like a weird form of intimacy. Inti that's the word, intimacy. And so, you know, and, and every day we're egging each other out. You know, and we're both competitive people and, you know, we want to take it out on each other in a, in a, in a good way. But uh, th there's nothing been more healthy for me to look at my wife's phone and knowing that, or look, her look at my phone, knowing that there's no riffraff going on in each other's business. And that's how we care about doing business because our personal business is with one another. Mm -hmm. you know, so if, if people, like look, look, look at uh, 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 Adam22, uh, uh, remember we, we, cover, we, we covered a couple podcasts ago, porn star, right? And she's always sleeping with women, always sleeping with women. And then uh, he says, okay, I want, you, I want you to finally, and then they interview the girl that they slept with. So, so they do a threesome, and but she's always sleeping with women. Yeah. And after they get them sleeping, they, they do a podcast. Yeah. Weird, weird freaking scenario, right? And so this time he goes, I want you to sleep with a dude now. I want you to sleep with his brother. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so she gets done sleep with him, and he buys her a Lamborghini. Yeah. yeah. You can't tell me in the back of your head that visual of your wife sleeping with some other dude is not out of your head. And he tries to solve it. And then here's the worst part. The other guy, he's like, yeah, man, he's talking smack about his wife and, and online. You, and you know what gets confusing to me is you have, all these, you have all these people, I'm one of them, who follow these traditional rules when it comes down to dating and being in a relationship. Stick to one person, exclusive, nobody else. Yeah. Don't look, don't, don't look around, don't fuck, don't fuck around. Yeah. Just stick to that one person. Uh -huh. Believe in a higher power and follow that righteous path. Yeah. And I, hold on, hear, hear, hear me out. I have a buddy in Chicago. Uh-huh. Remember that, that story I was telling you about that evening that I went out mm -hmm. to eat and I found that guy and the, the whole thing happened? Yeah. I have a buddy of mine who's going to propose to his, uh, to his girlfriend uh, this coming up year. Successful engineer. She's successful. Uh, uh, she's a nurse. Uh, I forgot what level she is. I think nurse practitioner. Yeah, I can't say names. But this man and this girl, for the last year, what they do, I don't think they do it anymore, but like for the first maybe, I don't know, first couple months last year, maybe a little bit of uh, mid-year last year, they go out, they go to a bar, they go to a lounge, they don't go to clubs, bar, lounges, or restaurants, and they prospect. And she says, he says. Oh, they're swingers. Which one? No, not swingers. Oh. They just invite a third party in, in, into their bedroom. And I said, dude, wait, so wait, hold on. You guys go out on Friday, Saturday, Thursdays, or whatever days you go out, mm -hmm. and you guys go find an, women to ha have a threesome with? He's like, yeah. I'm like, wait, do you, you want this, or, sh or how does this even work? So I don't want it. I'm curious. How does it work? How do you have a functional relationship? He's like, well, uh, she. Do you, I mean, what do you do? Do you do you watch your girl and another girl, or how does it work? He's like, no, dude. Like, she's the one who asks for it. And I at first thought it was weird because he's Mexican, yeah. so he's like, dude, it's kind of it's kind of weird. Um, but she gets turned on by it very heavily, and she's the one who invites it and wants it to happen. And when I first started doing it, it felt really uncomfortable. But now it's been such a, yeah. you know, uh, constant thing, thing that it's, it's normal to us. Yeah. But the way they the way they carry themselves around each other, the way they are, you know, the dynamic just seems very healthy. And next year, mm -hmm. this, this man's proposing to her, and from the looks and the way they are with with their family, they're successful. They seem to have, be having a thriving relationship. And then here we are. Now I'm not saying we us, but here are X and X people who. Follow the rules step by step. Pray about it. Follow every single step. Do the right, quote unquote, right things, and yet they can't seem to hold the relationship down. Uh, well, I, I think yeah. So you're doing compact. You're doing a contrast. It's mind blowing. Compared, yeah. Because yeah. you brought the porn star, and I'm bringing up two people who are regular Joes, average Joes like us, uh, who don't do porn, but yet they have a successful relationship. Who happen to have a thing for third parties, mm -hmm. including into their bedrooms. So it's. It, you know, it raises a question, I mean, how in this yeah. generation. Th think about how hard it is to have a relationship with one person. Mm -hmm. And then you put another person into it, you put another variable into it, that's, that's, that's rough, it's tough. Yeah. And it's the wrong variable. So, we like books, we read a lot of books. Okay, we mm -hmm. love a book, book of the month, everything. What book, last couple of years, blew up? What book last couple of years? Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, Fifty sure. Shades of Black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, why? Because deep down, these are a lot of women's fantasies. 
So a lot of women have these internal fantasies they don't mm-hmm. want to act upon because it's not the so-and-so. Mm-hmm. Men have fantasies too. Mm-hmm. I think the challenge is they're ashamed to talk about it. Mm-hmm. So in a, in, in a relationship, so you talk about the six needs of a relationship. You've got to have comfort, security, safety, protection. You have to have your stability. You have to have your, your feeling of grounded. You have to have your predictability. Mm-hmm. That's in a relationship so you feel comfortable mm-hmm. having those kinds of conversations because mm-hmm. you're not going to be judged or whatnot. But the challenge is there's a trauma there that's now being brought out as an adult. I think most people can't sustain a relationship is because of lack of communication or lack of not being satisfied or unseen, unheard, going back to the, the, the U's and the C's. But you, know, you talked about how you and Sheena communicate, you talk. You guys never fight. At all, <laughs> ever, right? I mean, you're in a freaking book about fighting. You know, you know, uh, your next five moves by Pat. You're in the book. You know, fighting in Dubai. How are you fighting in Dubai? Like, you're in the freaking Atlantis Hotel fighting. So I, I think it comes down to, and these are mistakes that I've made, not communicating. You know, needs that are met, uh, needs that are not met. The, the other book is what love and respect. Yep. We can say the same things, but mean different things. So if a, if a man says, "I have nothing to wear," that means nothing's clean. If the woman says I have nothing to wear, it means nothing's new. Like, it's a whole different level yeah. of communication. So it's speaking each other's language, the love language. I think that's a great book, by the way, Five Love Languages. Mm-hmm. I also think that a lot of the relationships you talk about is they don't have clearly ex- – they don't have clear expectations of what they want from the relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, the relationship should be I'm here to give, not to, yeah. not to get. Yeah. And um, – you know, the other part is people go into relationships that are already hurt, expecting to be healed by somebody else. But I think the saying goes, if you don't heal, um, what, what, I actually wrote it down. Yeah. If you don't heal from your wounds, you'll end up bleeding on someone who didn't cut you. So I think a lot That's of relationships bad. already start off on a bad spot. Yep. They start off on a, on, on a bad foot. So, yep. I mean, that's, that's the odds you're talking about. In areas of this type of confusion, I always default back to the word, which... I go to Romans 12, verse 2, which says, Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So I encourage you, if you're watching this, you don't have to agree with us. You can disagree with us 100%. Mm-hmm. Uh, or you can say, hey, that makes sense. So it doesn't make sense. But go search, go research, go read, go study. You got three different perspectives here of, of guys going through the process, two single, one married, and uh, what a wonderful thing this thing called relationships are. Um, this next topic here I want to bring up here is, is uh, uh, the, the reality. You know, we talk about money on this podcast all the time, and what, what, what's the reality of creating generational wealth? And oftentimes, uh, 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 what's what, the movie uh, Up in the Air? And uh, George Clooney's asking, I guess he's laying people off. He's trying to get the guy to rekindle his dreams again because the guy's getting laid off. He's you know, no health insurance and he doesn't have a job. And the guy's reminding him of his dream. He goes, he goes uh, so well, why do kids love athletes? And guys, because they screw lingerie models. He goes, no, that's why men love <laughs> NFL athletes. But why do kids love NFL athletes? Because they follow their dream. So let's take a look at here. Some athletes, we think they're creating this dream. and They're getting paid tens of millions of dollars. And you think they're creating money for an entire lifetime, a lifetimes, but that's not necessarily true. Let's take a look at this clip. What would be your advice for youngins coming in when they first get that paycheck? What should they do with it first? So your question, it depends on what you come from. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no need for KJ to buy me a house. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But a lot of parents in a lot of situations, they live vicariously through their kids. Mm-hmm. So when they Bruce. make it, it's we made it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We need this house. We, it's, it's that, right. you know what I'm saying? So it's those pressures mm-hmm. that some parents put on their kids, which is unfair. When you ask white kids, you know, what's the first thing you bought? They've never said anything about buying their parents anything. Mm. They're taught to move the money forward, mm-hmm. right? So whatever money they get, they're saving. So when they get kids, they can take care of their kids for their kids to take care of their kids. Right. We're taught when we make money, move back. We got to take care of our parents. We got to take care of our parents. So by the time we all get kids, there's no money left. So there's no yeah. generational. We can't use there's the no generational, generational wealth, wealth yeah. because we're moving it back. Right. Yeah, but the same thing with uh, Filipinos. If you made it to the States, you got to make enough money to send it back to the Philippines so you can bring everybody to the States, right? Okay. Instead of everybody earning their way to the States. But I disagree with that statement. That just turned into a racial thing. I think it's bullshit. Okay. I'm white. I okay. wasn't taught that. <laughs> <laughs> Not only you're white, you're Jewish. Yeah, exactly. So we're supposed to be good with money. We weren't. 
my dad had filed bankruptcy. Like they went through a bunch of shit. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a bullshit statement. I think people go through that race card way too fast. Yep. Um, and the best thing about our company is that we're all mixed. Multicultural, yeah. yeah. Look at the table. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Exactly. So, yeah. so like everything, friends, everything exactly. I learned about money, I learned about money by reading the books that you know, guys like you write, yeah. hanging around people like you that are more successful and having good mentors and associates. associates. Um, I do agree with the fact of people that get into professional sports do waste money um, because they do feel the family pressure. That part I feel. I don't think it's a racial thing. I think it's an environment thing where you grow up. So it could be Filipino, lot, it could be Mexican. Broke white kids too. Yeah, so that's yeah. what I'm saying. So I don't, I don't buy into that crap. That's victim mm -hmm. mentality. Stop that crap already. Enough. Um, I think the way you grow up, there are pressures. That's why, you know, you have to go to school to get a degree. Bullshit. You don't have to get a degree. Mm -hmm. To be successful, you have to learn a craft. You have to add yep. value, learn to solve yep. problems. Yep. Uh, you know, the, the wealthiest things in, in our country are, are, are you're going to become successful if you learn how to sell. Mm -hmm. Why is sales being de-edified? Oh, you're pushy. You don't have to be a pushy salesperson. Who said that? Selling is asking questions, solving problems. That's all selling is. Um, you look at other professions that make the most money, it's something that has to do with sales. You're in sales, you're in sales, I'm in sales. So I think a lot of it's, it, it's the environment that you're in. I agree with that part. I don't think it's a race thing. Um, athletes, when they get drafted, they, they play, because I, I, I was in that world. I played from a young kid till my early 20s, and you either get a contract or you don't, and that money goes away really fast because everyone's got their hands in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Uh, nowadays, a lot with the NFL players, because I work a lot with them back home, is they have managers. They feel they're looking out for them. So one guy I was talking to, Matt just doing kids, he says, oh, he just got he signed a contract for a couple mil. He calls him, hey, I want to buy this truck. What should I do? And the kid is wise enough. Now, I think the newer athletes are coming up the same way. I don't want to go spend money on a Lamborghini. I don't want to go buy the Ferrari. I want to go buy a regular Jeep. So rather than spending 100000 on a car, I will spend forty grand on a car. They're, they're becoming mm -hmm. more aware mm -hmm. to start saving more, which I think is a good trend because a lot of the athletes that made a lot mm -hmm. lost it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and one athlete that I'm actually very proud that we're associated with is Dion. When you interviewed yeah. Dion, I thought that was one of the best interviews we had at our, at our event, and it went viral over social media mm -hmm. because he had the persona of, I can have the flair, mm -hmm. I can look like this with the jewelry and so-and-so and not do drugs yep. and not do that. So he actually made being an athlete cool. He sold the lifestyle yeah, yeah. at sales. Yep. So I like Dion's example of having fun, having the lifestyle, but he didn't drink, he didn't party, he didn't do drugs. Nor did he swear. Didn't, just had some fun, yeah. right? But he had the persona. So I think kids want to become athletes because they want the lifestyle. They want the financial, mm -hmm. they want the toys. Mm -hmm. They want the fun stuff. Sure. Um, but going back to that part, your upbringing does matter. If you have parents, whether you're black, Hispanic, Filipino, Asian, mm -hmm. whatever, if they teach you values and principles, you'll learn certain things. Now, yep. is it true that I think some people have more advantages? 100%. Now, that does matter. But that can't be the reason why they hold you back. I look at Patrick with David all day. Yeah, like, all day. No advantage day. whatsoever. Yeah. He figured it out. Yeah. Now, his kids yeah. are going to have some challenges. <laughs> yeah. You know. So what's funny is we joked about this the other day. Patrick with David now is worth a couple hundred million. Imagine his kids now at, uh, at uh, Daddy Daddy Day. Uh, what's your What's your Daddy do Day? Uh -huh. You know, who's your Daddy? What does he do? Right? Like, oh, uh, what's your Daddy do? My dad's a, a mortgage broker. Oh, what's your Dad do? Oh, my dad's an insurance guy. What's your Dad do? He owns uh, this uh, paint shop. What's your Daddy do? Oh, my Daddy owns the Yankees. <laughs> like, good luck with that conversation. But what I like how Patrick's raising the kids is he's making them earn yeah. everything. everything. Reading books. Yeah. You know, you want Legos? Go read a book report mm -hmm. or get, go read the book, give me mm -hmm. the book report. So yep. there's standards growing up. Yep. So I think if parents are strict, more strict with their kids, we have to mm -hmm. get back to that part. Yep. Uh, I think the, the resources available today, I think we could change that. Yep. Um, I know we, we dissect a little bit there, yep. but that, that one just irked me a little bit. Like, well, let's, let's talk about resources. So in this clip here, uh, they're asked, would you rather have a million dollars or have it interest free for next 10 years. So let's, let's, take, let's take a look at this clip of what you do with this capital. Mm -hmm. If you could borrow $1 billion, 0% interest for 10 years, would you do it? No. Even though you could put it in treasuries. Come on. And pay it off <laughs> Come on. for 10 years. No. You could lock in 10 year treasury right now, 10 or 5%. No. no, it's not worth it. I don't borrow money. There we go. <laughs>
So there's a million dollars, wait, zero inches wait. for 10 years. A million dollars right now, Milton, a million dollars right now, 0% interest for 10 years, 0% interest. Not 12 months, not two years, 10 years. Of course. All day. Of course, no questions asked. All day. So what do you think? Why do you think Dave Ramsey says, back, back to our la last podcast. He's talking, you know, he's talking to middle America. Yeah. Middle low income America that doesn't know the first thing about money or finance, and then everything's a scam to them, everything's a pyramid scheme, everything's a rip off. Fine. But the wealthy people saying, Oh, a million, I'll turn that into five million in six months. Just give me a What do you think happened in the last three years in America? The wealthiest people go to banks to get loans yeah. and they leverage OPM, other people's money. And what do the banks do? The banks give yeah. you a rate of six percent and you're making twenty percent, you keep the spread. <laughs> Especially if you get a zero percent rate like that. You know? If I get a million dollars, zero percent, you got to be, bro, you know the context I have right now? But I didn't have the context now. I yeah. developed context. Yeah. Not, oh, um, I would turn that million in 10 years. But he, they were giving him an argument. Put in a 5% treasury for the next 10 years. Yeah. What would that million dollars be in the next 10 years, right? With, comp, with interest and compound interest. So You take you know, out the principal, you pay back the loan at zero percent interest, and it's all profit. Like even in, fi in, in insurance, it's premium financing. Yeah. It's like... So he's defending his message. Not he's the, defending the, the, his the, message, the, not, the not the logic. Of the, it's like a company out there that, that only sells one thing. They can't go against the message. Like, like buy, turn, and deficit. That's yeah. what you want to say. Buy, yeah, turn, and deficit. Yeah. Yeah. Right? They can't go against the message, even though that company actually sells whole life policies. Yeah, and, and they're, they're, they don't know yeah. that, do they? And they sell overpriced term insurance, and you know they're selling. You know they sell a whole life, pager right? in a smartphone world. If someone actually called their yeah. corporate office, they actually will sell you a whole life plan, <laughs> which is pretty funny. So, uh, and, and and speaking of uh, 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 people that you're speaking of team building. Um, what type of player do you want for your team? This coach here explains the three different type of players that you want to build a company with, your sports team with, a church with, a championship, anything with. Here are three different type of players. See which one you are. There's three kinds of players. There's an A in talent, A in mindset. He's your best player, hardest worker. You don't coach very many of those. Wow. Then you got A in talent, B in mindset. These are the players that are streaky, inconsistent, can't learn. They'll do 15 things one time. But they can't, they can't ever get better. And they, they, they're coach killers. They look great, but they can't play. Mm. Then you have the B in talent and the A in mindset. And these are the kids that make you look great because they don't look like they have talent, but they have great talent. They can learn. They'll do one thing 50 times to get better. They do personal, purposeful practice by themselves in the gym. I mean, they go in the gym and they really get better. And they eventually overcome the A, B. And they, they just go by them because they've got that A mindset. And those yeah. are the kids that are extremely mindset. successful because they've learned, they've used their abilities to the fullest. And it's not going to be a matter of they're jumping or running when they're running a business or whatever. I agree. Yeah. How, how, you know, that's why a lot of guys see how good they are in sports. And we just trade, you know, we trade the sports uh, with, with business. We're entre we're entrepathletes, right? Mm -hmm. So what's your, what's your, what's your, let me ask you, Mr. Trainer. What's your thoughts on on that? AA. I'll, I'll take three all day. Over uh, AA is over one, obvious. Over one. Yeah, I'll take o over one and over two. A a AA is like like a mythical creature that doesn't it rarely <laughs> exist. But type what is it? Type three, right? Is that, yeah. is that what it is? Uh, uh, B B talent A mindset. Mindset. That's where it's at. Because it, it being B talent, the mindset will overlap that. If you have the right coaches in your corner and you're coachable enough, that's going to overlap again. Type two. And from, if I'm not mistaken, maybe I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, the people that you guys look for in the business that you guys are in, a lot of them are B talent, and you guys are, your jobs is to mold them into mm -hmm. A mindsets. Mm -hmm. And the moment that you guys are able to tap into their whys, their purposes, their reason behind why they're doing the business, the, why they're pursuing this vehicle, and you tap into those, now you see the fruit. Mm -hmm. And now you see from the B mindset go to, and, you know, the A mindset, overcome the, the B talent, and you see the quarter million, the half a million, 750, the one million, okay. and they take off to the next level. So who was more talented, Jordan or Kobe? Who was more talented? More talented. Jordan. Yes. Jordan. Yeah. Jordan's one. Naturally, like you talk and, about and, and, and mindset. And mindset, right? Yeah. You talk about his grip. They like always yeah. said he could just grip the ball crazy. Mm -hmm. Who was Kobe? Kobe was three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kobe was talented, but yeah. not as talented, yeah. but his mindset was there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why he surpassed everybody. Yeah. So that's a that's a well. That's what he's known for. Exactly. He's, he's when everybody's he, coming in from the club, yeah. he's leaving the same hotel to go to the gym. Yeah. And but also Jordan also had that work yeah. ethic, yeah. the mythical creature. Yeah. yeah. So I I believe like if I'm, that's the first thing. I want it was Kobe Jordan. Yeah. Boom boom boom. Because talent, Matt, you're, you're six what, six five, six four. 
six five and high heels. And high heels. That was yeah. And then it's twenty it's twenty twenty four. It's okay. After an adjustment. Yeah. So <laughs> after, <laughs> after an adjustment. But the fact is, I'm not. I'm five eight. You know, mm-hmm. five nine on a good day and five nine and after a couple of drinks. Or so uh, <laughs> five nine after a couple of drinks. So so the fact is that I can never be as tall as you. That's a natural talent. But mindset, that's something we can't compete on. Oh, yeah. So you can't control your skill set and you can tr- control your activity. Yeah. Well, it's, it's 2023. You actually can be as tall as him nowadays. Wait, wait, With $70,000, you can get your knees done and be an extra six inches. Listen, I've had eight surgeries, oh, oh, wait, bro. Leave, my knees, we, leave my knees alone. We, we can bro. jump in a pool, bro. We can jump in a pool and our, our necks are the same way above the water. <laughs> the same height, bro. You know, I was going to start the OnlyFans page, but I don't think it's going to be in my best interest here. But, um, you know, I don't I don't know the, the, because the that, Because board. that's what it takes. People think that, you know, become a millionaire, John, right, to be an entrepreneur. Talent. Talent, talent right. It's not talent. And so here's the reality, though. The reality that this pastor talks about the reality of his observation of millionaires in America. Let's take a look at this clip. Average millionaire reality. Average millionaire doesn't get his or her dream to age 45. Doesn't become a millionaire at age 54. Five million millionaires in the United States. They dib and dabble in 17 different concepts, businesses, money-making schemes. Doesn't hit it big to the 18th try. 3.2% of all millionaires go bankrupt on the road to millionaireship. 30% have a Sears card. 40% have a JC Penny card. You'd be hard-pressed to find a millionaire in a suit worth more than $400 as you wear your Chanel and Hugo Boss. <laughs> Broke. The car they drive is at least five years old mm-hmm. as you drive your Lexus and Infinity, and now we're into Bentleys. <laughs> Good and broke. True. It's, it's reality, man. I mean, but, but John, I mean, you, you didn't become a millionaire overnight. And that's what a lot of you, like, they see your watch, they see your ring, they see your suit, they see this, but you've been at this game. And that's the, yeah. what we're trying to get across to people is they want the millionaire status, but the mindset is, they don't want to do the work. Everybody wants to eat, nobody wants to hunt. And uh, you talk about the stories, man. I want to hear about your stories. First time we, we talked, we got a real chance to really chat was in Dubai. Yeah. You know, we cigars, had the cigars. 10 degrees uh, at 10 o'clock. You got it. <laughs> Pools, right. And then, you know, we have more conversations, you know, in Chicago and then we, we hang out. But there is no success without a struggle. You talk about fitness, you have to go through the process. You got to go through the resistance. Results. You have right. to. It's Weight like going training. to the gym. So, training. so. If I want to get stronger, I'm not lifting two pounds. I need to add more weight to the arm yeah. for it to be stronger. But what do you have to do first? I have to tear it down. Yeah. you got to tear down the muscle yeah. fibers. Yeah. Then you have to rebuild it with more positive stuff. Every entrepreneur that's made it, uh, in, in financially speaking, of course, they've gone through a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I think that's also why we're also more forgiving. When we see someone trying to make it, it's like, yeah. go again, bro. I'm, I'm in, a, I'm in Corona's Lounge in, in South Florida, your favorite spot. That's your yeah. Canaan and I'm sitting next to a guy that ran one of the biggest gangs in Jacksonville. Went to Jeff for a little bit, got out, he's all good. He runs a lot, a lot of investments now, he does very well. I started talking to him. I said, let me ask you, what's a piece of advice you give to an entrepreneur that's going through it right now? He says, go again. So what are you talking about? Go again. Explain. He says, John, growing up in the streets, da 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 da. What else? What are your choices? You go again. It don't work? You go again. Right. You go again. I said, that's simple. Go again. You screw up, you go again. You mess up, you go again. What was the lesson? What'd you learn? Let it go. Let's roll. Yeah. I'm like, damn. And you become more resilient. You become more consistent. You find out what you did right. And rather than being so hard on yourself, yeah. you're like, okay, let's come up with a new game plan and go again. And that's the part where your character's developed. Every mistake builds character. So I look at these guys that are just starting out in insurance or they're just starting mm-hmm. in different industries. It's mm-hmm. like, you'll be all right, bro. Like, they, yeah. they make the dumb mistake. It's like, yeah, yeah you good? All right, let's go again. Because yeah. we've gone through it. Yeah. And it's almost like a parent raising their kids. They, they, they stick their, their hand in the, in the plug. You're like, don't do it. All right, you'll find out. Yeah. You're good now? It's, it's like, don't do that again. Yeah. They, they run it back. Yeah. And speaking of running it back, Dana White is giving Anheuser-Busch an opportunity to run it back. Wow. So we all know what happened during this last year's Pride Month. It was a whole LGBTQ trans type of movement through, throughout that whole entire Pride Month. And for the first time ever, a trans man? Yeah. yeah. Trans man? Trans, trans yeah. man? Trans woman. Trans woman? Yes, trans woman. Trans woman. Okay. okay. Became the front person to Bud Light. And everybody just blew up Bud Light. And uh, all these, all these uh, weird frat boys at the... That the, the chief marketing office said that we need to change the brand of Bud Light. Anyway, it, it, it blew up and they lost billions of dollars. Target lost billions of dollars because they tried to follow this woke agenda. So Dana White 
signs a new contract with Anheuser-Busch. People are like, what, what are you doing? What are you doing giving Anheuser-Busch another shot? They ruined it. Like, Bud Light should be out of business. It's never coming back. And this is why Dana White gave them another shot to run it back. Let's take a look at this clip. Let's talk about your, one of your more recent battles, uh, sponsorship, Bud Light. So if I have made the decision to go with Anheuser-Busch and Bud Light, there's a damn good fucking reason. I know the inner workings of the beer business better than any of the other fucking these guys out, these fans and all this shit. And basically, they went after Anheuser-Busch for being woke and doing what they did. Obviously, I've laid out all the reasons on why I'm way more aligned with Anheuser-Busch than any other beer company out there. And for those of you that haven't heard, 65,000 Americans are employed by Anheuser-Busch, mm. and a lot of them are vets. That mm. alone should be enough reason. Number two, they spend almost a billion dollars a year with U.S. farmers. That should be a reason <laughs> to do it. All the stuff that they do for uh, first responders and, and vets and, and $44 million spent over the last however many years for their families. Every time there's a natural disaster in America, they shut down the plant and turn it into a bottled water facility. And they've done something crazy like 100 million bottles that they've sent out to Americans in need. Give me a fucking break. I am way more aligned with Anheuser-Busch, so that's why I, I did that deal with them. Wow. See, that's the stuff that people don't realize, man. It's the surface level of why you don't want a company like that mm. out of business. So from the, uh, the, the single frat boy type of demographic. I'm a tequila boy, man. I, 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 I don't do <laughs> it. But it just goes to show you how the power of social media, how it can literally defame you and destroy yeah. who, you, who you are as a human being and without or knowing a company, the back or, or a company, yeah. without knowing the true essence of who you who you are as a person. Yeah. But no, man, tequila all the way, baby. I don't, I, I don't do Bud Light, man. <laughs> what's, your, what's, your, what's your tequila of choice before I go to John? I was going to ask. Oh. Uh, I'm a clase de azul. Yeah, that, that one's good, but I'm, I'm very Mexican, so I like uh, cazadores. But okay. what, what color bottle? White. Well, the, every day. The black one, you know, you, you like the black Shh. bottle. <laughs> hundred? Yeah. Hundred? One. No, they, one. Yeah. they got me in Aruba. They said one. One was not a hundred. I thought it was a hundred. It was... At a comma. It, it, anyways, but I want to give a shout out to Swazo. He's the only one that actually chipped in for the bottle. So, Swazo, if you're watching, love yeah, to you, buddy. Okay. Ever, okay. I'm not drinking with those guys ever again. Just Swazo. <laughs> Swazo's welcome to the house in London House anytime. <laughs> Get his KFC all day. Love it. But, um, what's your thoughts there about uh, Dana White here? That's why. I think his heart's in the right spot. And I, and I think he's willing to set aside the, the petty bullshit. Yep. They're saying, hold on, hold on, wait. Worried about this over here? Stop. Look at the vets that served our country. Uh -huh. That are being, no, no, no. Uh -huh. If the government can take care, oh, no, I'll take care of these guys. Yeah. Look what they really do to serve the country. Yeah. This little thing, we'll fix this crap here. Because you guys up top, I'm going to take care of you later. Because yeah. that's what he's doing. He's like, let me make sure the people that run the country, run the, real, like, that really need this. 65,000 employees. Yeah, exactly. He's like, I'm going to make sure all these families are squared away. Yeah. I'm going to go take y'all yeah. later. Yeah. Does that make sense? So the guys that thought they were making decisions, he's going to take care of that later. Yeah. He's, just finding, he's just making sure that the people that really need the income to take care mm -hmm. of their families... He's making sure they're taken care of. Yeah. I think it's actually a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Humility. I think it's a values and principles move with his beliefs. Yeah. And uh, I think it's also very strategic. I think America votes with their money and votes with their dollars. Their values and principles is how they spend money. And so when I, when I saw... Uh, th this whole you know, this whole year, people are saying, you know what? Let's boycott this company. Let's boycott this company. In the whole the whole DEI ESG type movement, mm -hmm. and it's even Victoria's Secret went to go, hey, let's uh, let's celebrate sexiness, and let's actually have some models run down the runway. You know, let's let's have let's have uh, that that swimmer no longer be part of a women's uh, uh, excuse me, a part of a uh, women's uh, swimming team. Uh, Leah Thompson, she can't join any uh, women's swimming team now. There, she's out. Now she went back to men's swimming, and she's back to rank. 300 in a way. A Kia is not a Mercedes. So, <laughs> so the whole thing is starting to fail. And I think a lot of these companies are starting to turn things around. The whole target with the tuck suit, that, that, that all, the whole debacle. So they're, they are rewinding and trying to run it back because they made a big mistake in terms of leaning towards the DEI, CSI, the CI, the ESG the, movement. Yeah, the loudest one in the room is the weakest one in the room. And I think we have a lot of complainers, a lot of mm. crybabies. Lot of, yeah. Stop. Yeah. That's not how the world works. Go yeah. overseas. Yeah. I think all these complainers, let them yeah. go fight over war. Let, let's go see if the people over there yeah. care about your complaining. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that yeah. way. Like we, got, we talked about masculine roles and feminine roles. We've lost that. Like There's, there's no polarity. Like who, who should lead the relationship? The male should lead the relationship, not be yeah. controlling, yeah. leading. Yeah. So if a woman's going to faithfully submit this healthy submission and unhealthy, right? That's mm -hmm. different. Yeah. But the woman's got to feel safe. The man's got to lead. That's alpha. Like, it goes right back to what Dana just said. No, 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 no. I'm aligned with this stuff. I'll take care of that later. Yeah, exactly.
And uh, before we wrap up the show, man, we got want to give honor and salute to a, an American icon here in the investment community, Charlie Munger. Let's take a look at this my screen. Uh, if we can go, Jordan, to um, let's see here. Uh, Charlie Munger sadly has passed away a couple of days ago. Uh, Warren Buffett's right hand man at Berkshire Hathaway dies at 99 years old. And I remember the, the last deep interview I watched with Charlie Munger and Berkshire Hathaway was all these Bitcoin boys were peppering and and just nailing these two old dudes about money because they didn't buy into Bitcoin, they didn't buy into NFTs, they didn't buy into the whole thing. Well, look what happened to Bitcoin. No wonder these guys never jumped into Bitcoin. No wonder these guys never jumped heavily into things. Why? They've been at this for a minute. Um, let's see, the death of Munger, a Berkshire vice president, vice chairman since 1978, marks an end of an era in corporate America and investing. Alongside Buffett, Munger was a respected and adored investor around the world, many of whom flocked to Berkshire and Berkshire's annual Cheryl the Weekends in Omaha, Nebraska, to hear the duo's folksy wisdom on investing and life. Though Munger was not involved in Berkshire's day-to-day -day operation, his death leaves Buffett without his long-time sounding board. Um, this, you know, this guy been around for a minute, so uh, at 35 years old, uh, Munger was introduced to the 29-year-old Warren Buffett in Omaha, Nebraska. The two started working together and ended up transforming Berkshire Hathaway mm -hmm. from a small textile mill into 785 billion multifaceted, multifaceted juggernaut. Their journey to unparalleled success was full of learning, experience, and laughter, but never an argument. And if you wanted to buy, John, if you wanted to buy, you know this, if you wanted to, Milton, you may not know this, if you wanted to buy one share of Berkshire Hathaway, buy Berkshire Hathaway is one of the greatest investment to, to invest in this company. One of the greatest investments you can put your money into. It's a six-digit uh, per share, right? So oh, it's six, yeah. It's six-digit, right? Correct. What do, by the way, what do you think? One share of Berkshire Hathaway, what do you think it is? To buy one share, for example, I'm, I'm buying a share of, of Tesla or, or Facebook. It's 20 bucks, 100 bucks a share. No peaking, no peaking. No, right. What do you think the one share of Berkshire Hathaway is? That'd be, I guess, between 350 and 500. That's not a bad. big range, not, not, though. Not bad, not bad. Would, Let's take a look at my screen. I would it's, think uh, 381. Damn. What five, five hundred forty-four thousand 44,000 per share. And since his death, today it's gone down by yeah. $2,964. And it's going to go back up. Yeah, of course. I mean, this looks weird on the screen, but for sure it's going to. So one share makes you a half a million. Yeah. One share. One share. One share. Right. Yeah, one share of this uh, company. And uh, where we used to do the podcast, you know, the, the Grandscape? Yeah. Right there. So the Grandscape, the, the Nebraska Furniture Mart, that's all owned by Berkshire Hathaway. That's a, that's a big-ass furniture store. Yeah. 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 The largest furniture store. So he owns Geico. Yeah. Owns uh, uh, fifty percent of their portfolio is invested in Apple. Majority portfolio, thirty percent of the portfolio is in insurance companies. A lot of insurance companies. So you know this ends an era. And and I remember Patrick was talking about we talked about uh, Charlie Munger, what his role was because he's older than than than, than uh, Warren Buffett. But his children would he'd sit down with his kids over dinner and every night he'd tell them not all the all the things to do in life, but he talked to his kids about he man. I ran across this guy, I ran across this rich person, and they lost it all by doing this. This guy lost his company by doing this. The guy lost his relationship because of doing this. So his kids would be injected with all the mistakes of the years of experience. This is 60 some years. These guys have been in business together for 60 some years. You know, uh, you're talking about uh, 19, uh, 35 years old, uh, 60, 60 years, 62 years. Damn. They've been together uh, uh, in, in business. So, um, you know, uh, their obsession over Costco, you know, uh, all these different things, their annual meetings. So these guys have historic. And, uh, you know, the weird part about Warren Buffett, still eats McDonald's every day, drives a Cadillac, lives in the same house in Omaha, Nebraska. Not, not caught up in his trappings, but to him, business is sport. Investing money for people is a sport. And these guys are, uh, have been crushing. The Oracle of Omaha, sadly, has lost his right hand man, Charlie Munger. His best friend. Yeah. And it goes, goes to show you that uh, the relationships. Power partnerships, man. Uh, and Munger, realistically, was almost, and they, they, they debate this back and forth, Munger was smarter than Buffett. Uh, but Buffett obviously brought his, you know, his weight to the table. Munger's more of a silent guy. Mm -hmm. um, I read a lot of books about these guys growing up. And, you know, when Warren was, do, was coming up and he was raising money and there was a fund he wasn't sure about, he returned everybody's money. Mm -hmm. So then no one lost, and the market dipped, everyone stole their money. So like, yeah. man, we trust this guy, so they gave it back to him. So he was always that guy that uh, learned how things work, but it was ethically and morally sound, and so was Munger. And that's why these guys, last time I looked, it was 381. And then I haven't looked in a while, I'm like, 
Maybe the B share. Yeah. Look at the B share. Maybe, but I'm like five. I was surprised to see that. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Um, Let me pull the sucker up. But it's still, you know, how many lives have they changed? Yeah. Yeah. How How many many business? How many business have they invested? How many jobs they've created? Yeah. And then I think about what IMG is doing. Mm. How many lives are they changing? IMG is yeah. becoming the Berkshire Hathaway of the insurance sector. That's right. Come on, baby. Let's go. That's what they're, they're buying this company, this company, they're buying everybody else. Okay, yeah. well, that's what Berkshire is. Yeah. So I, I, I think um, on a more uh, spiritual situation, friendship, relationships matter. And that's where you can do great things. That's why these guys are doing what they're doing because they were such a solid foundation. Yeah. Like there's trust here. We don't mm-hmm. have to worry about nothing. Mm-hmm. We could be open with mm-hmm. each other. We could tell stories. We could get mm-hmm. intimate stories with each other. Yeah. And, you know. And by the way, every time uh, Milton has to work on Sheena, he goes, bro, 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 respect, is it okay if I go to your house and massage Sheena? And he doesn't have to say that. But by the way, I, already, I, I trusted him within, without even having to say it. Yeah, and obviously it's a professional conversation. Mutual respect, yeah. But it's still a, yeah. you know, Thank you. everyone needs oh, that. Sure, bro. Everyone needs that in their yeah. life. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are trying to do it solo. Um, I think he just lost his his guy yeah and i think he's heartbroken right now yeah um so warren buffett needs some people in his corner otherwise you know he could be he can deteriorate fast i mean he's how old now yeah that, that, he's he's well he's only six years younger than him so yeah, he's so, 93 okay. yeah so i mean i want to be surprised if that happens to him because he's heartbroken he's um, yeah. he's emotionally hurting so i i think you know he needs his guy he needs, yeah. He needs yeah, when you when, when you lose your, your your running mate in life whether yeah. it's a woman or just a, a frag really good friend and you, you lose that person on some level, you tend to lose a yeah. sense of direction and purpose in life. Yeah. So you're right on that. Yeah. But I think the company's still going to do okay because yeah. like it said in there, it was smart. Yeah. Yeah. It's said, not in day-to-day operations. Yeah. Yeah. And he's taught enough. Well, we said, guys, I appreciate you guys tuning into this podcast. Uh, every Wednesday uh, afternoon, and this time we have a special podcast here with John in town. This Friday afternoon, we were able to do this podcast. But uh, make sure you stay posted here to the 7 Fear Squad podcast, a channel dedicated to help you think like a millionaire, strategize, and become a first-generation cash flow millionaire. We'd love to know your thoughts, your questions. Please post them. In the comment section below, make sure you subscribe here and tune back here every Wednesday live afternoon, 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. With that being said, on behalf of John Mason, Milton Alvarez, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. See you next week. Bye-bye.